we're going to look at mechanical behavior um, of metals. And I don't need to write out the title every time. Eh? That's probably annoying for you when you're listening to these. Mechanical behavior of metals. So we've covered elastic behavior. You're familiar with that. And basically what we're going to talk about now is well, what happens after you load up sufficiently that you go out of that linear elastic region. So what ends up happening is the curve actually looks something like that. I usually draw an X at the end. That's where it's actually broken as it's fractured. Technically it's broken into two or more pieces. <clears throat> but some other stuff, interesting things happen before that. You know, For example, right here is, is the end of the straight line end of the straight line, end of the linear region. Okay, and then the, you know there's a peak on the curve and after that the the stress uh, goes down. There's a peak there. So these are potentially some interesting features that we need to discuss and, and define. <clears throat> so that's what I'd like to do. So let's see, uh, what are we going to start with? So I mean quick, um, quickly the uh, end of the straight line, uh, we can we can discuss this way. We can say, well, before that straight line, we had a relationship between stress and strain that was linear. It's, stress is directly proportional to um, strain through the constant of proportionality. So we can actually call the end of that straight line the proportional limit. Proportional limit. That's all it is. It's just the end of the straight line. It doesn't necessarily mean that we've started to get into plastic deformation yet. It's, it turns out it's, it's for most metals it's very close to that point. But there's going to be a point where we start to uh, plastically deform somewhere just a little bit after that proportional limit. We're very close to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to define some, some strengths here. And I'm going to start off with a few that are perhaps a little bit easier. So let's define this strength. It's broken. It's fractured into a, a couple of pieces. So if we extend or uh, take the, the value of stress corresponding to where it fractured, we can define a, a value of stress, and we'll call that the fracture strength. Now you'll notice I actually used a new piece of terminology there. I, I, I used the word strength. I said strength. The fracture strength. So strength. I just want to clarify this. Strength refers to a specific value of stress. Okay, so you wouldn't be wrong to say that this was the fracture stress, but you're more correct to say it's the fracture strength because it's a specific value that you've identified for. Um, along the continuum of stress. Stress is just force over area. Strength is a specific value of stress. We can also identify this peak here, right? That peak is another value. And it's up at the top of the curve there. Um, and so it's the, it's the ultimate strength. Strength. It's the ultimate. Ultimate. Ultimate is like the, the best, right? It's the top. So the top of the curve is the ultimate tensile strength. I'll write that out for you there. The peak of the engineering stress strain curve is the ultimate tensile strength. Ultimate tensile strength. Sometimes it's just called the tensile strength. Sometimes it's called just the UTS. Uh, so those are things you, you'll see it referred to as. So what, what's a, another value of strength that's interesting to us? We've got the fracture strength, we've got the tensile strength, or the UTS. Well, obviously, we, we have to define somehow where the pla plastic deformation begins. So we could say that roughly, we can define this term, the yield strength, 
uh, plastic, what am I doing here? Plastic, plastical, plastic, sorry about that. Plastic deformation begins at the yield strength. So we have to define this term, the yield strength, sigma subscript y, where plastic deformation begins. But, but where is that actually going to be? You know, well, we, we've we discussed se uh, separately that plastic deformation would have to be when the sample dimensions don't return to their original uh, upon unloading. We, we said that um, the atoms or the molecules are moving to new positions, but we're trying to identify it on this curve here. And where's it going to be? Well, it's going to be close to the proportional limit. So we could jot that down here. It's going to be close to the proportional limit. But where is the proportional limit? You know, it, it was easy when I drew a big yellow dot there, right? But what if you actually had experimental data and it looked, uh, you know, experimental data might look something like this. You've got all these dots that are being plotted and it's roughly linear, but there's some experimental scatter. And then you have something like this. Now, oh, maybe you've got extensive plastic deformation or something that you got, and then eventually it uh, perhaps it breaks right there. So when you've got data that looks like that, where 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 was it? Where was that deformation? Uh, where was the proportional limit? In fact, you know, is it is it is it here? Is is it here? Different people would identify different places, and so there's some ambiguity there, and it's quite difficult to determine it in in a um, a fashion that we can easily repeat as engineers in different places in the world, in different labs with different equipment. So what we do to avoid any ambiguity is we have adopted a convention. We say, all right, let's take a value of strain that we know to be sufficiently high that most materials will have strain, uh, plastically deformed by then, but not anywhere near where it's going to fracture or even near the UTS uh, typically. And so it's just a convenient value of strain. And so that convenient value that we pick is strain equal to 0 0.002. Sometimes 0 0.002, sometimes you can multiply that by 100%, and you'll, you'll see people refer to this as the 0.2% offset yield strength that we're going to determine. Why offset? Well, because we draw another line up here with a slope parallel to the original, right? It's the same material, so it's got the same Young's modulus. And we take the stress where that new line intercepts the stress strain curve for the material, and that's where we define our yield strength. And that avoids any ambiguity in determining it. So that's that's what we do for for most metals, many metals who have stress strain curves that look like the one I've sketched here.